enclosing the spondylitis in the spine. This is a hot topic. When it comes to enclosing the spondylitis in the spine, there's a lot of important points that we need to remember. And these points will start by diagnosing and closing the spondylitis in these patients. There are really a lot of problems when you deal with a patient that has enclosing the spondylitis and has a spine trauma or sudden onset of neck or back pain. If we don't pay attention to the enclosing the spondylitis patient with a spine trauma, then the outcome is not going to be good. And here is a scenario. A person with enclosing the spondylitis had a minor fall and has neck pain. You get an x-ray and the x-ray is negative, no obvious fracture. So you discharge the patient home after giving the patient a cervical collar and then instruct the patient to follow up in the office in a week. What is wrong with this picture? There is no fracture. We want to make sure we are not missing a fracture of the C-spine in a patient with enclosing spondylitis. So how do I recognize that? When you see a patient with enclosing spondylitis and spine trauma, even a minimal spine trauma, even if the x-ray is negative, you need to hit the pause button and think about it. Also, have a high index of suspicion for a fracture of the spine in a patient with enclosing spondylitis that has increased range of motion of the spine after a fall. That spine may be unstable. Don't send the patient home with a soft collar or a corset, even if the patient does not have neurological deficit, even if the X-ray appears normal. This kind of patient that you need to admit to the hospital and you need to investigate the patient properly and you probably will need surgical stabilization. Number one, make sure you're dealing with a patient with enclosing spondylitis. So how do you diagnose enclosing spondylitis? Look at the spine. See if you have a bamboo spine, especially with fusion of the discs. The marginal syndesmophytes. You don't have large syndesmophytes in enclosing spondylitis. The ossification of the intervertebral discs. Involvement or fusion of the sacroiliac joints. The HLA-B27 probably will be positive in the majority of cases. The rheumatoid factor will be negative, and the patient will have limited chest expansion. The patients are at high risk for occult vertebral fracture that are not easily seen on the x-rays. So the x-ray is characteristic for the bamboo spine, for the sacroiliac joint, but not very good for detection of the occult fracture. Number two, you must have a high index of suspicion for fracture in enclosing spondylitis patients, and you need to get further imaging of the spine, which can be CT scan or an MRI. Their fractures are not easily seen on x-rays. If the patient suffered a minimal trauma, low energy trauma, or experienced sudden neck pain or back pain, then rule out a fracture of the spine. The fracture in enclosing the spondylitis may not be seen at the time of initial presentation. Up to 50% of the fractures can be missed, and delay of the diagnosis can occur in up to 20% of the patients. So you need to get further imaging of the spine with CT scan or MRI, even if the patient is neurologically intact. This occult fracture can displace, and the patient can have neurological deficit or deterioration. If the patient is not diagnosed early and they have proper stabilization, 
These fractures can be extremely unstable and are associated with a high risk of neurological deficit. Even if you image the entire spine, occult fracture can be easily missed. And if you are in doubt about ankylosing spondylitis, image the SI joints to establish the diagnosis, especially if the cause of pain is not clear. Patients with fractures of the C-spine and ankylosing spondylitis have a high rate of neurological deficit and mortality than other patients in the same age group. The neurological deficit with ankylosing spondylitis is over 50%. The mortality increase up to two years after the fracture. So when you hear that there's a minor fall or low energy fall and the patient has back pain, then there's an occult fracture. If the patient has ankylosing spondylitis, then there's an occult fracture. This is an occult problem that we must diagnose. You may actually get the CT scan and it may not show anything. It may not show clearly the fracture. Then you get an MRI. The CT scan and the MRI complement each other. The fracture may be missed by one, then get the other study to see it or to exclude it. Usually the fracture appears to be minimally displaced. The fracture is an extension type and may be associated with neurological deficit. For example, loss of the strength in the lower extremity. Neurological deficit can occur even after stabilization of the spine because of epidural hemorrhage. So what happened? We missed epidural hematoma. The MRI will clearly reveal the epidural hematoma. One of the principal concerns for ankylosing spondylitis is epidural hematoma. The fracture is highly unstable and have a high incidence of epidural hematoma due to disruption of the epidural veins and the hypervascular epidural soft tissue in addition to a rigid spinal canal. The vertebral bodies are vascular and their canals are relatively enclosed, making it vulnerable to epidural bleeding. These are patients that also have cardiac and pulmonary comorbidities. The mortality correlates with the older age group and increased number of comorbidities. These fractures are highly unstable. Why the fracture is unstable? The fracture is unstable because it extends across all three columns and creates two rigid segments that move independently from each other, and you call it chalk stick fracture. Because there is no mobility between the vertebrae, the fracture occurs as a transverse fracture of a long bone, and it can be highly unstable. If you miss this condition, you can have neurological deficit and progressive deformity. The non-surgical treatment will not work for this unstable fracture because it can lead to displacement and neurological deficit. So we need to do multi-level stabilization, usually posteriorly. The treatment of epidural hematoma is posterior laminectomy and evacuation of the hematoma. You also stabilize the spine fracture by posterior stabilization and fusion. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.